Hi, welcome to Heavy's Guide to Passing. I'm a coach here at PsychArt, and uh, this is a guide that I use to help my uh, students work on racecraft and, and uh, getting through traffic. And we're going to have a look through this guide. We'll talk about some concepts that are, that are used uh, on the different uh, turns here at PsychArt, and we'll look at some videos of this stuff in practice. The first thing I like to show people is how two carts can be travelling at exactly the same speed and yet when they come into a corner one of them ends up in front of the other. Typically this is where all the passing happens on, on corners. It's not really about being faster than the other driver although that happens quite often where you're a lot faster than the other driver but what these, um, these two circles show us is that two carts running at exactly the same speed on traveling the exact same arc one cart can end up in front of the other in respect to the corner now this is uh, the basic concept behind all passing um, and all types there are different types of passes where you come out you enter a turn inside somebody or you exit a turn inside somebody or on the outside you'll end up at different positions on the track and these these positions uh, give you a positional advantage of what we call uh, the preferred line um, over the other cart so in this case say where the cart's coming on the inside it it's able to get to the apex and stop this other cart from from getting there first so the things the key thing to note about these arcs is that imagine we have travelled in on straight lines before we've started our turn and the red cart here is slightly offset to the right of the black cart. Imagine these two are right behind each other. The red cart now turns into the turn, begins its turn in like a full cart length before the, the black cart does. As it does this, we watch the front right corner of the the passing cart in respect to the lead cart note the, the second rectangles here and there's a point at which the front right corner and the back left corner are almost touching at this point we're, we're in the clear and the red cart can just run a straight line down the inside or continue on its arc can continue on its arc and it's going to end up at the apex before the black cart can get there so that's the, the two cr critical things here. You'll notice up here on these, this, this image where the red rectangle is slightly offset to the right of the first black rectangle. And as we move to the next stage, the red rectangle starts to come across the back side of the lead rectangle. See the, the relationship between these two. As we get to the next stage, the red rectangle is now inside the black rectangle and this continues until we're side by side. At this point, the um, and even this point, which is pretty much the same thing, this red cart could opt to just travel in a straight line and get a nice wide apex to, and all the while blocking the lead cart. So this is the basic concept that we're going to be looking at and how we can execute this and you'll be seeing this theme repeated over and over again in different types of passing where we set up an offset and then we move ourselves into a gap that gets opened up as the cart sets up for the turn. So let's take a look at the turn one pass. This uh, little picture here shows the, this is the, a map of the front straight and this is turn one, the left hander, this is where the steel plate and all that is and uh, and then we go right here off into turn two. The uh, black rectangles here represent the standard line, the card, a card on the standard line and the purple rectangles here represent that card under brakes. So this is a standard card coming in breaking the, to turn and rotate for turn one. The green rectangles represent the passing card and the line that it has to take in order to get inside this, this gap here and the red rectangles represent that cart under straight line brakes. Note that the uh, purple cart brakes before the red uh, the, the passing cart so these red rectangles are, are further up. As we come into the turn 
the green card has set up has created the offset right here and begun its turn in earlier as we make our way down this line we're watching the front right bumper of the green cart. The green cart is watching this front right bumper and in respect to the back left bumper of the lead cart and they're, they're looking for this gap between the wall and the cart to open up. That's when they can run straight down the inside. You'll note that at this stage the black cart and the wall are really close. There's no way you're going to get inside of that. Yet as we we get into this space, as this space opens up, we're able to run straight along and break late in front of the line of the lead cart. So that's the, the general way in which the turn one pass works on a, a decreasing radius turn. And we'll be looking at this more in a sec. We'll have a look at some videos of, of this in execution um, and how it works. So now from this position, I'm going to pass them in turn one. So I offset to the right as I follow them and I'm going to wait till as we get about here and I'm going to turn in early start crossing over early and now I'm watching his bumper here and my front right and I'm trying to match them line them up so I get into this situation as this gap opens and now I can just run down the inside he's trying to come over but I just run straight here and then turn in late. See his card is still hanging on the outside edge but I have preferred line so I come in just enough and I run overshoot it a bit over this way to push the front of his card over here and uh, now he, see he has nowhere to go, he either goes into that wall but uh, or gets in behind me which he'll, he'll do and now I keep it fairly tight, I don't want to come over because if I delay my entry there's a high chance that he's going to come up the inside and T-bow me. So I keep it really tight here. And uh, I'm pretty much set from here. I have preferred line into the next turn. So, uh, and he's, he's behind me anyway. So, <coughs> if we go back a bit, have a look at that again. Set up for it. This works with, with very fast drivers as well. That's just a classic pass uh, from the front straight into turn one with between two drivers that are pretty much travelling at the same speed. On the inside, on the outside, bit of a gap, and we turn down and line up the front corners and make use of this, this gap that opens up. get on the brakes kind of late probably breaking about here sort of straight and control the turn okay the second most popular pass at, at Sycart is the crossover pass um, this pass comes up most often in turn seven uh, that's the turn as you come up through the back straight and you go through the sweeper um, there'll be a left hander and then there's this right hander if you can imagine that um, the left hander is six and then seven we'll, we'll be having a look at that some more in the video in this case um, the black cart here we're traveling from the bottom of the page to the top the black cart hits an early apex and shoots themselves wide while the red cart comes in with a wider apex and turns himself down and gets on the inside and underneath the, the other cart. And there's different ways to make this happen, but usually people do this to themselves somewhat. And uh, it's very common for a slower driver to come out of turn six and shoot themselves wide to the wall for whatever reason. Um, usually they've apexed early and shot themselves wide. And this is your chance to get over here, get wide, create this big space between you and then close down and get into this gap here that opens up on the exit. So let's have a look at some video at, um, at how that plays out. And you'll notice again we're traveling the exact same arcs, uh, but you just end up 
way on the inside of the other cart as you come down onto the other turn. So theoretically you could be travelling at exactly the same speed and still pull this off. There we go. Here we go. Alright. Let's have a look at some passing. Now these guys were fairly slow. Um, we can see here we're approaching turn 6. Uh, we've got a driver that's uh, running pretty much mid-track and we can expect uh, we can expect them to overshoot turn six so let's have a look so the first thing you want to do here is you go a little bit wider than normal you see here, here's a standard oil patch and usually I'm over here and you can see how tight this guy is as we're coming in with okay he's going to early apex he's going to botch this turn so we go a bit deeper than usual with the intention of getting over here close to the apex now see how far off the apex I am actually. Well we see he's parked it on the exit, very common in this turn. And now we've run over here, well I don't have much hope of, of holding the outside here but if he's going to repeat this this pattern he's going to park it over here. So I run way deep, look at the big gap I allow here and I turn with the intention of getting in here just as this gap opens. There it is there. And there's the gap. Now keep in mind uh, I'm running at 270 pounds so I'm, I'm not running that light at all. Um, and now we can just run down the inside. We have preferred line coming into the next turn. Okay here's another look at the uh, crossover pass coming into the the last turn. Um, okay, we've got very late early apexes, very wide on the exits. Probably expect that to happen again over here. So let's see. We come wide. They've turned in slowly and they're parking it on the exit. This is because this driver is not lifting. They're not trying to control their speed and their balance for this turn. So they're just trying to be using way too much gas and they're pretty light which causes them to just sail out on the exit. It's very very common with new drivers. And now that I'm there I have to be careful with this driver because they're very small and they're light so, and I'm at 270 pounds they're going to get a run on me you can see here I'm, I'm in front of their cart but you can see they were about to take off so I make the outside of my cart touch the outside of their cart and if there is any accelerated momentum if they have any speed advantage because they're light it takes it away it actually gives it to me and you can see we're having a bit of a drag race and they're able to get the upper hand of me. Now I'm not pinching them in the wall on the outside, I'm just making the, the pods touch each other. And now I have controlled line. There's not much they can do. Okay, the sweeper pass. Let's take a look at this one. This is my favourite pass, but you don't get a chance to pull it off very often because it's kind of hard to do. This black line is your standard uh, driving line, cut on the, the standard sort of line, and they have to um, Actually, in this case, we've, we've apexed up here um, early, actually. Uh, but they've come. You've got to get wide for turn six. This is a sweeper coming to six, and this here is seven. They've got to get wide um, and set up for the the entry. Uh, so what you, we try to do is we run slightly deeper, and we get ourselves slightly higher off the wall, like the pole. Um, which allows us to come down and hit this a super late apex and normally you'd be apexing about here and we try to apex later and get on this tight arc and come down on the inside line. Let's have a look how, uh, how that plays out. Okay here's an interesting pass. So I'm traveling at my usual pace and I notice a driver up front going pretty slow mid-track through the sweeper. You can see I'm closing him fast. Well, at this point, what you don't want to do 
is just sort of follow them because you're going to run into them. They're, too, they're going too slow. So you come out wider. Like you can see how I, I start making some adjustments to get myself out here. Now normally we want to be over here. This is our fast line. This left wheel is going to be crossing on that paint there. We can't do that. We're just going to run straight into them. So we lengthen our line, get ourselves out over here. And now we start aiming to get inside the gap that's going to be created by this driver as they get to about this point. So we come down, we're aiming, we're like open up, open up, and there it is. They open up, and there we are. Like Again, we're lining up this the front left bumper with their back right bumper, anticipating that they're going to open this gap for us. And now, because they're going so slow and we're going so fast, we just run down the inside here. We've pretty much got them. Now, the thing is, when you're in a situation like this, sometimes they're running a bit faster. It's not so important that you make this apex. It's more important that you just control the turn. So what I'll do is I'll run a little bit deeper, usually. And I've early apex and I'm shooting myself kind of wide. Way wide. It's a terribly wide line. Uh, but that was, that was just uh, to control that line and make sure they don't get around me or, or my hold it. If they do get under me over here it, it's okay. I can block right here if I if they're gonna race me I just park the brakes here. And uh that's an inside pass out of the sweeper into turn six and seven. Okay, so here we are again at the entrance of six, uh, setting up for this pass. If you're up against a more experienced driver, they're gonna see all this going down, they're gonna go, okay, so they're gonna try and probably try to, to run a bit wider on the entry and to get a, a cross under it and, and come underneath you um, at this apex. So as we come through here they're going to get wide and they're going to start appearing on your left side as we, we get to this point. Now they're going to have two choices. One they can sort of just run straight and pinch you off into that plastic or two they can get themselves a nice late apex over here and prepare for a cross under to or a crossover to get you over here as you make your right hand turn. So if you see them appearing over here on your left, you want to try to get yourself out more and start heading over towards this direction. That'll stop them pinching you into the wall and uh, it'll also allow you to defend uh, any attempts to get wide and get a cross under because you just get inside them and then just slow down and just make sure they stay outside and they can't get inside of you at all uh, and then you can turn down late and get a late apex yourself. So the other option as you get through here for most newer drivers is that they'll sort of fall in behind you and they're just going to point their cart directly at you. By about here you're not going to see anything to your left and you're going to know okay they're either behind me or they're on the outside. In that case you keep running along the wall and you don't come out, kind of like we do in this one. We come out a little bit, but we don't open this gap enough for anyone to get inside it. In this case, if he does try to run along the wall, he's not going to T-bone you and he's not gonna, any contact with you is just going to help you. Uh, if you come out too wide and you delay this entrance too much, then you're at risk of someone running along the wall, especially a new driver, they're going to do this, or a, an aggressive driver who doesn't know how to pass, and they're just going to slam into you like they're in a bumper car, and you know, hit you big time into the side, right as you get here, they're going to come down that wall and just BAM, they're going to connect you there, uh, and that's going to hurt, so, um, so the counter is just, yeah, to keep that tight and make sure they stay behind you. Well, that's the uh, basic guideline to passing. We looked at the the arcs and uh, how we can have two arcs of exactly the same uh, radius and uh, how two carts traveling exactly the same speed or even at different speeds, how the cart behind gets itself into position to take advantage of the line over another one. Um, I'm going to finish out with some just some some clips from from different passes. Okay, we're going to take a look at some passes. Uh, starting here uh, after a red flag, everyone's having to go again, and I had to pull over and let the 
Daniel by. So I've taken off, this guy's parked, we get around him and this cheeky little bugger here cuts down the inside, takes a lead. I'm like, oh, what? Okay. So, they're just parking it all over the place. And here we are. But he's so slow I hit him. I'm like, oh god, how am I going to get around this guy? And there it is there. So, <coughs> I'm from way back here. This is crazy. This guy must be so slow. But the thinking here is, even though they're tight here and there's not enough room, most drivers are going to open up about here enough room for you to get under them. So what you try to do is line up your outside right with their inside left on the rear and you aim to get right here into this situation. Once you're here you can shoot forward now he's turning down but we have enough speed that we can get to the apex before him. Once we're in this position we pretty much from about here we own the turn. He can turn down, he can do whatever he wants we just go straight, a little bit straighter and we don't have to be right on the apex for this we just have to control the turn so I'm going a little bit deeper to make sure that he doesn't try to run up and get inside here alright let's chase this guy down oh he's way off the apex here so we're going to get way wide we're getting ourselves right over here on the wall so that when he comes through here and parks it on the exit like he surely will now again as he comes here as he exits off this apex he's going to open a gap for us you see it right there opening up and we drive in right underneath him so as he heads out we come in under and steal the turn and a little bit of a jolt so have a look how we handle the next driver. Same sort of thinking. The driver's off the wall a bit. They're probably going to overshoot the apex. And we'll get over wide and see if it happens. I have to watch the guy coming up from behind me. Um, they can sometimes I just run down and T-bone you. So I'm hoping they're going to be polite and allow me some entry. Well, it didn't work too well. The guy slid out parked it on the apex because he's worried about hitting the guy in front of him which has caused me to hit him bomb okay I'm screwed I might have avoided it I'm not sure what happened here so I've lost momentum and I've gone wide now they're sitting way over here in the middle of the track not even the middle I mean they're totally gonna choke this next turn so we get nice and wide here we've got an offset of the carts not just the gap but I'm to the right I'm intending to come down on the inside let's see if it works sure enough they've shot wide and I just drive down the inside and meet the front of my cart meets there slightly but I'm trying not to slam into this guy and now that I'm in this position I need to open some room so I have to drive a little bit more straight sort of open this gap here I have to open that up so I'm going to drive my wheel, this wheel, I'm going to aim sort of at, get my left wheel into that number one plate. Let's see what happens. See how I'm pushing him out and my left wheel's in that number one plate in the middle of him. And I've just sort of opened it up to, um, to take control of that turn. Let's see how this last driver goes. Same sort of thinking. I'm hoping that they're going to park it over here. So I've come wide to set up for a run to see if I can get inside and I a little bit of instability myself so I've given him a, a push and I'll have to do it on the next turn. So here I come out wide and I'm aiming to get a very late apex and let's see if I can pull it off. And I'm hoping that they, oh my goodness they're too tight, they're too tight. So I've aborted and I've gone wide. 
and now I'm going to do the old crossover. No, look, oh, somebody's pushed in on me. Oh dear. All right. Ah, but ah, no. I don't have the the weight. Okay, so now I'm I'm going to try pinch down. I leave him over here, nice and tight. I get out wide, and they're so slow. I'm just going to run around them. And so that worked. That's an unusual situation. Usually they'll dive in on you. Okay, let's take a look at some passing here. Back it up a little bit. Okay, we got this is a pretty unusual situation. We're heading at, at our usual pace and this guy's come over and totally parked it on the outside wall and he's really tight to the apex so we're going to get over and just see what we can get away with here we're looking to get into this gap as it opens up and it looks like we got just enough he's running very slow <coughs> so I just want to say all of this is um, kind of a gift the guy kind of gave it to me uh, by running so wide and choking this exit and allow me to get up some momentum so that I could run through and, and get a run on him under here. But he also stayed right out in the middle of the track and left this, this gap open on that apex. So it's not a very common thing that you can capitalize on. It's really so we're running mistake. at 270. Here's a, a newer looking driver running way wide in the sweeper, sliding around completely mid-track. Actually, it's pretty damn wide. Uh, so we're running our usual line, fairly tight. What are we going to do about this person? I don't think we're going to be able to get inside of them. They're sliding around there. Okay, so we go wide. We get over to the right-hand side of them, and we're anticipating that they're going to do their usual, come what they just did in the last turn, sort of run mid-track and, and end up over here parked where this guy is. So we come out wide and set up for a nice tight apex. You can see we're pretty much almost already already inside of them. As they've spun out sideways, they're parked. And then we're carrying momentum. Problem is, we can't do a lot because they have preferred lines. So we have to pull out over here. And we put our cart out over here and we let them... We create this big gap inside. We let them run to the apex. And they're going to run ultra tight. But they're going to open this gap now. And we're going to have a momentum. Well, they they slide a bit and park it again, but that lets us just get inside of them here. And now we have preferred line over to the next turn. Now this driver is kind of parking it on the exit and running mid track. So they sort of parked it and they're dead center. And. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> it's given me a chance here to run down the outside, which is a pretty risky business. Most drivers, if they see you over here on the outside, will t spin their head and their cart will go where their head looks, where their eyes look. But I was able to hold the outside here, so I'm thinking, well, maybe I can run the outside. We'll see what happens. But this driver just sort of trundles along and keeps it super tight. Well, We've got kind of a pinch down situation here, so we come out wide. He's so tight, he should be out where I am. And there's nowhere he can go there except to spin, but he gets on the brakes and does something and just parks it there and I tap him. But now he's super tight on the right hander, so I do the usual. We come out wide and we're going to try and get underneath him. Now I'm a little bit close, I didn't create enough of a gap, but. And I clip the wall here and clip him. But that's where we need to be. We've squeezed in the inside. It was a super tight one. This guy's so slow though. He is super rotating here off the apex. Make sure he's really trying to keep his cart mid track. These are so hard to get get inside of and, and to pull this off but uh, he has to open up right there 
it's super tight but he's going to keep rotating and he gives us enough room and that's all we need we have the momentum <coughs> I've actually pushed some momentum into him and he's accelerating but we've got preferred line to the apex okay here's one of those really tough and annoying drivers that run mid-track or really tight and choke and slide all over the place so here's a driver driving a pretty tight line but missing the apex and sliding on the exit and parking it really bad and so you're forced to check up and try to do things not to hit him thought I might have a try to get on the inside there but it ain't gonna work so we're kind of stuck here now again into the back straight Oh, they were kind of quick. All right, so they're running up here in the sweeper. You can see the full throttle, not modulating at all, and mid track and sliding on the exit. And they're really light, so they get they can just race off on the straights. So here again, very tight. Like you want to have your your left wheel, left inside wheel here. So these guys are way tight and leaning in. So they. Their center of gravity is going to be pushing down or outwards, so they're going to slide. Here it comes. So they're sliding already. And parking it right there, which is great for me because I'll run around them. But I cannot beat them to this turn. They're going to beat me there, and they're going to go for it. So I get the cart over here on the l way wide, create this huge gap. Because they're going to be so slow as I get out of this turn and we turn down um, it's, a it's a classic crossover and we aim to get inside right as this car parks so a, you can see it's a big timing thing now I've got momentum he has none and we basically have him <coughs> excuse me <coughs> another look so there's the big slide and we're going to try and get underneath that now one way we can approach this is we can stay to the outside and we can pinch him down the apex and, and force him to we, I mean we want him down in this area but instead because he's going there anyway we go and put our wheel left wheel over here now we're looking at him see where he's going to go and we're trying to time this Now this guy parks it on the exit, which is normally a, a deal killer. As soon as they park it there, bam, and they if they don't leave, leave enough room in this gap, you're, you're screwed. But this guy keeps rotating his back and opened it up, so we just drive down the inside <coughs> using our momentum to get a run.